Hello, welcome to Do It Yourself with Wayne. Today, we're installing an electric fence to protect our gardens. Uh, as you can see, we've got three raised beds here. The, this one behind me is about half planted. We haven't started planting the middle one yet because it's too early in the season for that. The, uh, the one up at the top, uh, it's, it's mostly planted. We've got stuff coming up. And in our area, we have trouble with deer. And if they show up, they pretty much clean you out in one night. So you don't wait till they start being a problem. You got to be ahead of them. Uh, we also have trouble with rabbits and you know, other small uh, rodents of one sort or another. Uh, don't mind raccoons and possums and stuff being around. I just don't want them eating my garden. So we use electric fence. Um, we bought this, I don't know, about three years ago. It's, um, it's intended for uh, small animals for enclosure, but we use it to keep them out. We have found it to be very effective. It's just a small electric fence. And I just like to say, I've used electric fences for horses and animals for years. Probably going back 25, 30 years, I've used electric fences. They don't kill animals. They don't even really hurt them that bad. It just scares them and runs them off. That's all it really does. So, you know, it is safe to use. It's, they're safe around children. They're safe around people. If you get against it, you're going to get a little shock, and it's going to scare the heck out of you, but it's not going to kill you. It doesn't leave a mark. Uh, it just scares you, and you want to get away from it, and that's what it does to the animals. It just makes them go away. So anyway, we got this little charger. There's a lot of different brands and stuff you could get. Most any farm and garden place will have these. Uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that, you can buy these. Uh, this particular one, the brand name is Fishock, but like I said, there's a lot of different brands out there, um, and they're not very expensive. The next thing you're going to need is your wire that you run around. This wire, you buy a large roll, you use a small fraction of it in most cases every year. Don't worry about trying to save your wire at the end of the season. Just wide it up and throw it away. Uh, you'll need some kind of a clamp for your ground wire. Now this is our ground post here. It's a copper post that we'll be driving into ground because you got to have a good ground or this thing doesn't work. Uh, so you need some kind of a little clamp and there's a lot of different styles that you can buy. Uh, this is not my favorite, but it's what I found this morning in my junk drawer. So we'll be using that to clamp the ground wire to our ground rod. I got these little stakes. These are just little plastic stakes that you can drive into ground to hook your wire to. There are other styles of insulators that you can get, but the wire that is hot, you got to have insulators. You can't just hook it to a metal post because that'll grind it out and your fence doesn't work. You got to have some kind of an insulator, and we're using these insulated posts. In the past, I have used insulators that you hook to a metal post, but the, the wire doesn't touch the post. And then I got a couple of metal posts. Um, we'll be using those at the corners. Uh, because the corners, you, the wire pulls on them a lot. And these little metal, uh, these little plastic posts, they're great for when you're running a straight line, but the corners are just not strong enough to hold up. So what we do, and we'll be showing you this in a few minutes, we take the metal post and drive it into corners, and then we'll put one of these posts just out in front of it and tie and hook them together. So the metal post gives the little post the stability for the corners. And we'll be showing you that. Got a couple of hammers. Uh, I use a rubber mallet to drive these posts because with them being plastic, uh, a hard hammer like this one, you can bust them up. But I do use my big hammer. You can use a small hammer. You can use a backside of an ax or whatever you got to drive the metal post in the ground. And uh, we'll be showing you all that as we proceed along. Now this is where we're starting. I'm on, first thing I'm gonna do is put my metal post in my four corners. Got my big heavy hammer. Like I said, you can use anything that's sufficient for driving these things. And when you start your fence, don't put it right next to your bed because I have found over the years it's better if you come out about here so when you're working with your raised beds, you've got a little bit of room to walk between the fence and your bed. So I'm gonna come on up. Uh, I wanna make sure I don't get into my, my uh, zayas there. I'm gonna put that fence post right there. And we'll do that for all four corners.
Now to show you a review of what we've done so far, we installed four metal posts in our four corners. And we installed four plastic posts just inside of the metal post. As you can see, they're six inches or so apart. Doesn't matter, just, you don't want them touching. And we run a wire around the top of our four posts and came back to here this point with the end. And we just wrapped the wire around a few times. Uh, this is not real difficult. You, when you bring your wire around, you just wrap it around and that's all you gotta do. And we cut a separate piece of wire to put between the plastic post and the metal post. This is to keep the plastic post from getting pulled over by the wire because these are not very strong. So we cut a separate piece of wire, we wrapped it around here, we come around our metal post, we twisted the ends together, we twisted it around, put our ends down where they won't be sticking out and hurt somebody. And that gives the plastic post the support. So that's how, we, that's how far we've gotten so far. Now our next step is to drive our ground rod in the ground. And I would caution you to um, Try and be sure that wherever you drive it into the ground, there's nothing, no underground water lines or power lines or anything, because the ground wire, or the ground rod rather, does need to be driven fairly deep to give you a really good ground. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and drive this in the ground a ways. All right, that should be good enough for our ground rod. But like I said, just be careful that wherever you drive it into the ground that there's no underground power or water lines or anything that you might run into. Now we're ready to hook up the charger to this. Uh, basically, you got two places to hook up wires. Pretty simple, you just stick the wire under it and you go with it. Um, on the front, it'll tell you which one goes to ground and which one goes to the fence. Uh, I've already cut two lengths of wire. I'm gonna go ahead and hook these up right quick. And one thing that just came across my mind as I'm messing with this and these wires are flipping around, um, the ends of these wires can poke you in the face or in the eye or something. So when you're messing with the loose ends, just be real careful that you, know, you kind of got control of the ends. Uh, but we've got two wires now and uh, you may want to make sure they don't touch. Got one that goes to the fence, that'll be this one. All you gotta do to hook it to the fence is just wrap it around there a few times. Doesn't matter where, just, it just needs to touch the fence. Uh, I usually wrap it around there multiple times, but uh, it doesn't have to be, it just has to be touching the wire. Now your other end is your ground. Uh, I did have to get a different uh, clamp than what I showed you earlier because the one I had before didn't wouldn't clamp down on my post very good. I'm just gonna wrap that around there a couple times. And I'm gonna go down a little closer to the bottom and then tighten the clamp down on that wire. You just wanna make sure that that ground wire has good contact with your ground post. All right. So now this is what I've got. I got my charger. I got two wires. One goes to my ground rod, one goes to the fence. Well, we run into a little problem with our fence charger. Uh, this is the, the one that we've had for the last three years or so. And when we hooked it up this year, it doesn't work. And these things, you, you don't really repair them. If they quit, you just get another one. So we bought this one. Uh, it's a little different, a little bit larger but it has the same function. Uh, the only difference is it can charge more length of wire, but the function is basically the same. You still got a ground wire that goes to your ground stake. You got a hot wire that goes over to your fence. And uh, I drove this 
two by six into the ground to mount it to because you want to keep it you know, out of the weather. Uh, we don't have a building or something we can put it in close by, so it's got to be out here in the yard. And uh, in order to cover it up, I'm just going to take an old bucket, put a brick on it, and that'll keep it out of the weather. So now all we got to do is plug it in. And now my fence is charged up and ready to go and working. Uh, so that's it for the electric fence. Um, I'd just like to say again, uh, electric fences are not going to kill animals. They don't kill people. They shock you, and it, yeah, it might hurt a little bit, but it doesn't kill anybody. Uh, the biggest danger that you have with an electric fence is people may walk into it but the, because they don't see it, particularly at, at low light times or at night. So, uh, you know, try to do what you can to mark your fence to make it easy and visible to see. And uh, I've also got some labels that I put on it. It says danger electric fence just to help warn people, just to make it a little more visible. And, uh, you know, that, that really is the biggest danger with an electric fence is people getting into it when they don't know that it's there. So mark your fence to make it visible. And, you know, that's pretty much it. And so this is... You know, do it yourself with Wayne. We appreciate you visiting. Please like and subscribe to our videos, and we hope you have a great gardening season.